Hey, appreciate you clicking on the video. So, you clicked on it, you saw what it is. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about today is retrieving a fox over obstacle, or more commonly referred to as the fox in the box. Uh, disclaimer up front, I am not a JGHV judge. I'm not a JGHV apprentice judge. I have not done J, um, VGP yet, and we are just training for it. So this is strictly my, how we got here, how we trained for it, my perspective and uh, what I think about this particular test event. I'm gonna go over a few things with you uh, from what the rule book says to how we got Hades to where he is um, right now. So I'll get into that with you. All right, so what is fox in a box? Basically, real quick, like the bottom line up front on it is you have a fox or a raccoon in a ditch or a box, it's just a, uh, pile of sticks basically looks like a little square uh, dog jumps over grabs the object jumps back retrieves it to hand right delivers to hand so what I'm gonna do for you is I'm actually going to take the most current uh, version of the rule book here and I'm just gonna read what it says for you uh, so retrieving a fox over obstacle I'm not gonna do the German because I don't speak German Retrieving a fox over obstacle is tested at a ditch, hurdles, etc. The dog must be able to wade, must not be able to wade through or around the obstacle. The obstacle must be located in the wild, and if possible, it should be a natural obstacle. At least, it should blend in with surroundings. The ditch must be at least 80 centimeters, 31 and a half inches deep, and one meter, 39 and three eighths inches wide and must have steep walls. I've never personally seen uh, the ditch used, but I've only trained by myself and with uh, BDD Atlantic in New Jersey. The hurdle must be 70 to 80 centimeters, 27 and a half inches to 31 and a half inches high and built in such a way that the dog cannot become entangled in it with its legs. The handler leaves his dog at least five meters away from the obstacle. After placing the fox behind the hurdle, he releases the dog from this place. At the, after the first start, the handler must not reduce the distance to the obstacle from that point. The dog should clear the obstacle after one command, pick up the fox without any delay, in a tight grip, and retrieve it over the obstacle to its handler. If the dog drops the fox while jumping over the obstacle but immediately takes it again, it is not considered to be a fault if the handler did not interfere. At this test, the handler may start his dog maximally three times. The retrieving performance of a dog on fox drag and in retrieving of fox over obstacle must be evaluated separately. A dog must receive at least the predicate sufficient in either the fox drag or the retrieving of the fox over obstacle. Otherwise, it cannot pass the test. Um, so that is all that you got going for the rules. Um, and I'm going to show you basically how to do it. It's not hard. So some of the hard things with this test uh, is procuring the raccoon or the fox. Um, I would recommend for you to start, if you know you're going to do VGP, before you even start HCP training, I would honestly start looking for your fox and raccoon. Uh, there's a few ways to get foxes and raccoons, really four. If I had to say, you can get lucky with some roadkill. That's how I have my raccoon. Um, your club can have foxes and raccoons. Maybe you can borrow one. Uh, but you have to provide the game at the test yourself. You can trap and or kill your own raccoon or fox. Or you can find, like, uh, on Facebook or somewhere else, maybe a trapping group and offer to buy them at market value or above market value. The value of fur is pretty low right now, so if you went to uh, a trapping group and offered them, hey, all you gotta do is catch the thing, which you're gonna do anyway, I'll pay you at or above fair market value and you don't have to do any of the, the cleaning of the animal because you want it whole. I don't see why you wouldn't get that. Um, but you're gonna need those and you're gonna want more than one because uh, training days happen, they sit out in the sun, they go bad. Um, but there are other options you can do. So when you're first starting to train, just use a standard bumper, which I'll show you later in the video what that looks like. You probably can figure that out. Um, another option is people use uh, goose tokens because they're relatively heavy. 
you can use uh, large rabbits. So there are websites out there like Rodent Pro, or you can probably find them on other websites where you can get very large rabbits. Uh, I have one currently in my freezer that is just shy of 11 pounds, right? Um, the standard for the fox is that it needs to be 7.7 .7 pounds. Uh, I think that comes out to um, three kilos, three and a half kilos, something along that line. Uh, so you can train with much larger fur game. And then another option is they have, you can get these dummies, right? So they're just actual fur, like this one's a raccoon, this one's a gray fox, and um, inside of it, you probably hear that, is just a sandbag filled with gravel from a uh, lake bed. I just filled them up. They work great um, because like the raccoon is, I think three and a half pounds, and then this fox is 5.7. Um, so remember your dog, just like you, has to work up in weight. So when you start, I don't recommend uh, just starting off with like an 11 pound rabbit or eight pound fox. You're asking them to do something new, something very athletic. Uh, if their neck strength isn't up to par, you could hurt your dog or they're just gonna fail the test miserably or the training event miserably. So start slow and work your way up um, with weight and with distance. So I'll show you what I mean by distance. All right, so this is my box that we use for Hades. It's uh, 34 inches tall, which is, uh, what is that? It's uh, two and a half inches above the standard, uh, maximal standard of 31 and a half. But what you can do and what we did when we first started is start lower. So you could start down here and work your way up, right? When you're first teaching your dog how to do fox in a box, the goal is to get them to jump over and retrieve and come back. You don't need to start at 27 and a half or 31 and a half or anywhere in between or above um, necessarily. Now, if you know your dog can do it, then go for it. Um, <clears throat> the first one we did was with a bumper and I think we were at probably that 27 and a half inch area no big deal but when you're first teaching your dog he might not know hey to jump over especially if in your house you teach him not to jump over things you use baby gates whatever the case is the dog might be like I'm not supposed to jump over or onto things so you're gonna have to teach them to jump up and over um, if your dog is properly force fetched it's not gonna be an issue you're just gonna have to start very close and work your way back so um, we're gonna simulate what that would look like Hades is through force fetch and he does this pretty well um, we're uh, to the point with the raccoon, but I'm going to show you how I would start and how I would progress um, And we'll go from there. So very easy. This is just you know cut lumber you can use um, Nothing is securing them together besides their own weight and I have a couple sticks In the ground uh, <laughs> It looked a lot better before, but it's been used quite a bit, so it's been shifted because the dog puts his feet up there. All right, so I'm gonna go and grab Hades. Um, like I said, these are not going to be his first reps or fresh reps or whatever, but I'm gonna basically walk you through um, the training process with him. Uh, when we get to the raccoon, there may be some issues there because we are only on our second day of using raccoon and it is 0.2 pounds under the um, weight requirement, but we're two and a half inches above. So. Um, I'll walk you through that and I'll show you with the bumper changing height um, all of that but uh, it's also not a bad idea to start with the lighter one on the first rep of the day do something in the middle second set of the day and then your your final ones with the actual game animal or the heavier uh, bumper at the end just like you would need a warm up in a workout your dog should probably warm up as well too um, they're probably a better athlete than you or I, so treat them that way. Uh, so I'll show you what that looks like, Fox in the Box, and then I'll go over uh, my thoughts on it. Uh, you know, this is just JGHV, but should other people do this? That's what I'll talk about at the end. So first rep, we're just gonna use one of these bumpers. Uh, I have no affiliation with them. This is one of the dog bone uh, hunter bumpers. I really like the guy, makes a good product. I really like these bumpers, so if you're in the market for bumpers, I don't get anything from it, but uh, check them out. Stay. All right, so you're gonna bring your dog to heel. You're going to want to show them 
you dropping this off in there. Um, lesson I learned, mistake, was not putting it over the top where you want him to jump. No! Here. Sit. Stay. Um, was I was putting it over on the sides or from behind. Um, and that caused Hades to want to go that way because he saw me drop it off there. So just put it at the front and then uh, lay it out that it's easy for them to get it and jump out. Good boy, good boy, Gip. You're very good, very good boy. You guys are very good boys. All right, so nice and easy. You saw he jumped in, picked it up, came right out. This is extraordinary light. I'd be surprised if this weighed more than a pound. Um, it's filled with cork. So make sure you're positive. If you use a clicker, use your clicker. If not, give him some positive encouragement. Good boy, good girl, give him a little pet. Um, he's off running around or whatever. And then we're gonna move to the next bumper. We're gonna move to this raccoon. Like I said, I think it's three and a half pounds if I remember right, nice and easy. Um, but when Hades first did this, it was not nice and easy because he didn't have the neck strength. Hades! Good. Good gift. Very good boy. Very good boy. All right, so you saw how he dropped it when he came out? That's okay, right? Per the rule book. Ask a judge what they think, but per the rule book, that's okay. Um, he immediately picked it back up without any interference from me, the handler. So, no big deal. Heel. All right, so when you're putting these larger game, these heavier game in, don't want to just throw it in willy-nilly. You want to give them the best opportunity for success. So place it in towards the end or towards the front. You want to go parallel with the beginning, perpendicular to the sides. This way when they jump over, they just need to turn around, get a good firm grasp and jump over. This thing's really gross. I don't blame him. Uh, might have to do this once or twice. No, here. Heel. 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 Hades, heel. Good boy. Hades, set. No, fetch. So we had a refusal there. I had to give him a no fetch. We're gonna do it again. This thing's roadkill, so it's pretty gross. Here. Enough. Heal. Heal. Fetch. Good boy. Good boy. Yep. One more. We'll do one more. No. Heel. Heel. 
No, leave it. Feel. Boy, good boy. All right, so that's my breakdown of like how to train fox in the box. Um, just start light and work your way up to heavier weights. Start low, work your way up. Don't do two at once. If you're gonna raise the, uh, if you're gonna raise the obstacle height, don't raise the weight at the same time. Um, if you change one variable, don't change two, right? Always take two steps forward, one step back when it comes to dog training. Uh, one of the biggest things with this that I noticed, uh, your mileage may vary, but confidence was honestly the one of the biggest things. Besides hit potential refusals, like I've been getting a couple refusals on um, the raccoon. Like I said, it's a roadkill raccoon. It doesn't have a nice winter coat. It is a summer raccoon that we got that got hit and was anywhere from one to 14 hours old on the blacktop when we found it. Um, so we got a couple refusals, but honestly, confidence is the biggest thing. The first few times you do this, don't get mad, don't get frustrated with your dog. They may be trying to navigate the obstacle. They may not be sure about their footing. They might not be so sure about the jumping over the obstacle part. Help your dog, work them through it. Um, if you needed to give them a stern correction, give them a stern correction. If you need to give them some nice positive reinforcement, do that. Um, now with that, do I think that if you're a NAVDA guy or a retriever guy in general, you should do this event? I do. Um, I don't have any way to quantify or prove this, but I firmly believe this will make your dog a better retriever. You are asking it to retrieve a heavy item, um, which... If you're a waterfowl hunter, the closest thing's probably gonna be a goose, right? Or you could get crazy, I guess, with a swan or a sandhill crane. Um, and you're also asking them to take it out of a ditch or over an obstacle. So if your dog has to navigate something on the way back, such as a large deadfall, or it goes the wrong way up the bank, your dog cheats instead of coming straight back to you in the water, it goes around the bank, it ends up being a ditch. Um, if your dog doesn't have that confidence, the skill, or the ability to jump over it, you may have a dropped bird, or your dog may just take forever to get back to you with that fallen game bird, or that uh, duck, or whatever. Um, also, I think that having them, um, forcing them to carry your heavy items will help their retrieve in general, and I think that making them do fur and other items that they uh, don't necessarily want, not disgusting, rotting, or anything crazy like that, but things that maybe aren't uh, so high desire for them as a bird or a duck or a, fr uh, a rabbit, um, but a predator animal uh, is gonna make them a better retriever because they learn they have to pick everything up. You do that through force fetch, but this is an extension of force fetch. It's also gonna increase their obedience, their delivery, um, and their athleticism. So I think that if you have a NAVDA dog or even a um, just a dog you use for retrieving, this would be a good thing to teach them and to train. Don't go too crazy in depth. It's not uh, that big of a deal. And also don't forget to scale it. If you have a 30 pound Cocker Spaniel, you probably don't want to try to do this with a 10 pound rabbit, but maybe a five pound rabbit would suffice. Um, but that's basically fox in a box or fox over obstacle, fox over ditch. I personally really like training this event. I think it's fun um, when it's an object Hades likes and when I give him a lot of breaks between it, he bolts over, jumps over, comes back real quick. It's a very quick event to do and I don't think it's a hard one to train for. Um, if you're experienced in the VGP or JGHV, let me know down below any advice you have or anything I messed up. Um, just do that disclaimer again, not a JGHV judge, not an apprentice judge, I haven't observed or participated in an actual VGP um, event. This is just what I have done so far to get my dog to where I believe is an acceptable level that would pass the uh, VGP. Um, so again, thanks for watching. Hope this video was informative and uh, hit the like if it was. I would appreciate that and I'm gonna go
and let Hades run around for a while because he needs some exercise. Thanks, guys.